Race number five, this will be the opening leg of Jackpot One. They're going over the test of stamina. It's 2,400 meters. World Sports Betting Highland Night Cup. It's non-black type. And as we mentioned, 2,400 meters, due off at 1425. The favourite at around 18 to 10 is number 13, Bayberry. And being number 13, he's got that 13 gate to overcome over the 2400 metre trip. But let's have a look at Bayberry in action on the 22nd of the second when he won on that occasion. And then an interview with Stuart Ferry and Atendiwe Mgutwa. This is now as the end of the final 300. Dharma has come forward to pick it up. Baybury along the inside. No more from Strathnan. Silver Sky up the outside. Trip the colour has to lift down towards the inside. It's Baybury in front. Silver Sky up the outside. He's coming to grab him. Baybury, Silver Sky, Dharma between those. It's Baybury just in front. Silver Sky up on the outside. It's going to be close. Here comes the line. I think Baybury lasted long enough from Silver Sky. Trip the colour. Dharma behind that and Strathnan close on top. Yeah, wealthy, I uh, love Scots for, you know, hopefully uh, we get a bit of rain before now and then. And um, and he also, you know, he obviously likes a good pace. So if the pace is on, uh, he'll be running at the, at the at the finish. He's had two good runs, his last two runs. You know, his only problem is that he, he, does, he seems not to jump, uh, come out on terms at the gates. And uh, that's always costed him. But so uh, his last run, he came out well enough and uh, it was a good third. So I'm hoping he comes out on terms with 50 on his back. He stands a good chance. Looking at the best weighted column, number 10 marching on together, ahead of number 4, Pods of Victory, and number 13, Bayberry, and they clear away from the rest of the field. Now, Dees, the important question here is that draw 13 for Bayberry. Justin Snaith, when he brings his horses to town, we know he comes to KZN for a reason. 2,400 metres, you've got to get lucky from the draw. Yeah, you've got to get lucky from the draw, and uh, you've got to get lucky at Scottsville as well, but... He's an up-and-coming stayer. You mentioned a plan of action and you just look at this horse and the way they've been bringing him along. His last win, which we just saw, which was his last start, you have to go as far back as the 20th of July 2019 when he won his maiden. I just looked it up. It was 19 months that he didn't win after winning a maiden. So it took a long time for him to crack uh, you know, that, that second career win. But that said, then you look at his merit rating and you see that He's always been high up in the rating, so he's been consistent out the maidens in some good company as well. But I think now that Justin has put him over ground, he's a different racehorse. And I'm hoping that he's a different racehorse for the connections because, you know, the guy's paid a million rand for him. So they'd be hoping that he could do something <laughs> now, you know. He's just a two-time winner. But yes, I agree with you. I think Justin may have a plan of action with him with regards to the staying distances. And we'll see how he goes. If you ask me, is he an 18 to 10 shot in this field against marching on together whose next bet in the betting market at 9 to 2 and then favour at 11 to 2 and then Anso last year 7 to 1, I think I'll say too short because there's lots of negatives against the horse. The fact that he didn't win for a long time, winning last time out, first time Scottsville, uh, you mentioned the draw as well. but. Uh, we showed that replay and I've got him on my horses to follow as well because he just seems to be in our stayer that we could follow. But the race certainly doesn't stop there. Wealthy, I like the fact that you've got Stuart Ferry. I've been for this horse many times. He hasn't worn for a long time, but he loves Scottsville. If he bounces back to his best, it'll be no surprise for me. And so Lazio gets a mention from me. Marching on together, don't be concerned about the weight, guys. If there's a horse that I know that can carry this pudding over this distance, it's this horse. Seen him carry 61 and a half, 62 kgs before, so he has to get a mention. He's a classy stay on his day. Merlin from Berlin, I'm not discounting Sheldon. I think he's a, a horse that uh, will give a good account of himself. And then when you look at the spread of the weights, you know, I heard Atsindiriwe and Gula mentioned 50 kgs. It's a big spread of weights, but the horses at the bottom, most of them are under sufferance here. So it's a, it's a skewed race with regards to weights. Will uh, Bayberry win? I'm going to say he'll be the horse to beat. And that's why bookmakers got him up there because it's so confusing after him. They're hoping that the Cape form is going to be too strong for the KZN form. And I think that's why they got him so short. 
Well, there you have it from D's. It's number 13, Bayberry. Lucky for some, unlucky for others, number 13. But if you go with number 13, Bayberry, you know Justin Smith will have him in a perfect position. And Richard Ferri, they would have done their homework. And he will probably be the horse they all have to beat, number 13, Bayberry. So let's see how he goes. All the best of luck in the opening leg of the Jackpot 1.